close this door. Okay. If you want to, you can copy down specific heat of water and kilocalories and all that stuff just as a fun reminder of your time here. You don't have to for this necessarily, but if you just still wanted to have it for practice. All right. Now we talk about electric power. So you're going to have about another handful of formulas today. Not going to lie. Okay. In today's discussion, we are going to differentiate between direct current and alternating currents. Relate electric power to the rate at which electrical energy is converted into other forms of energy and calculate electric power and the cost of running electrical appliances. Now, we don't necessarily spend time on here on <coughs> um, calculating costs of running electrical appliances. We focus on just what, you know, the general electric uh, power um, present. So, we talked very briefly about batteries, but the whole purpose of batteries and generators is to supply energy uh, to charge carriers. Then we can feed off that, we can power um, various devices. Now, current, as we just saw, can be different. Okay, you've heard of band ACDC. Well, that's what electricity is, okay? We have direct current, alternating current. Direct current, charges move in a single direction, alternating current, you can imagine they are going to be alternating very fast, okay? And a lot of, you know, our typical homes in the U.S. use alternating current, but as technology has kind of advanced and we have um, more technical and precise devices like your cell phone and everything like that, even though alternating current only loses such a minimal amount of power as it alternates, usually normal appliances and stuff like that don't even pick up on that, but your cell phones do. So that's oftentimes um, within your cell phone chargers, kind of built-in converter, where it actually converts that AC to DC in order to charge your fancy devices. But you know that's what we prefer um, is alternating current in the United States. <clears throat> now, to solve electric power is the rate of conversion of electrical energy. In order to calculate that, you have electric power, which is measured in watts, is equal to current times potential difference. I times delta V. Speaking of electric power, I can relate to yesterday evening to the internet. How many of you were going bonkers last night? Yeah, I can, I mean, I don't know if it was a combination of, you know, I we stream our TV, so obviously I can't do anything there. I was in the middle of watching a ghost adventures show. And, or if it was the fact that my daughters apparently can't survive life without the internet now, they're to that point, so. Apparently, we become the entertainers of the household. No, that's not my job. <laughs> um, but finally, I think it was like at 10 o'clock or something like that, it came back on. But anyway, so yeah, I just wanted to rant about that. Now, we've also discussed resistance in here, okay? So we're looking at power dissipated by a resistor. As you see here, we have a multitude of equivalences here. We just saw that power is equal to I times delta V, but we start adding resistors in there. You can get P is equal to I squared R. If you don't know what current is, but you know what your potential difference is, you can use the formula P is equal to delta V squared divided by R. So we still are kind of basing ourselves around that Ohm's law where we have the correlation between current, potential difference, and resistance, okay? So don't forget, though, where one is equal to something, the others are also equal to everything else. 
So highly, highly, highly important to um, identify what variables you have. Now, in your typical energy bill, that's always fun to open up every month. Um, energy companies or electric companies typically measure it in kilowatt hours because so much of it is used. It is much easier to measure in a larger uh, metric value than just you know putting it in there for the normal non-scientific folk to try to figure out. But um, as energy is transferred to homes, it is transferred at high potential differences in order to minimize energy loss. So as you look at those power lines, they are being, it is added, uh, electricity is being sent from pole to pole, house to house with high potential differences, trying to push that out. So as a reminder, here are your units. Power, again, is watts, capital W. Delta V is, well, V. I, which is current, is amps. And R resistance is equal to what? Ohms. Now, for your upcoming test, I, um, I've created it. It's online since, again, we don't have 100% here. Um, so you also might have scratch paper for the test on uh, Thursday. It is like 10 questions. I think two of them are like two-part questions, but I make sure very first words are two-part question, OK? But you know, there will probably be one or two or possibly three questions that you have to solve for resistance. In the question itself, I just say, just write the word ohms because that symbol, you're not gonna get that symbol very easily. So just write ohms and we'll be a-okay, okay? So let's look at a problem here. We have an electric space here, which is connected across a 120 volt outlet. The heater dissipates 1,320 watts of power in the form of electromagnetic radiation and heat. Calculate the resistance of the heater. So again, you got all sorts of things, that, ways that we could set this up. But because power and potential difference are given, but we don't know what resistance is, use the form of power equation that relates power to the other two variables, which would be this one right here. P is equal to delta V squared over R. So get my handy dandy little camera here and we're going to dim it. So again, P is equal to delta V squared over R. Well, what do we know? We know that the power is 1,320 watts. We know that the potential difference is 120 volts. We are solving for R. So rearranging this equation, we're gonna get R is equal to delta V squared over P. And then we can go ahead and plug in our values once we got it set up. So we have 120 volts squared over, <clears throat> excuse me, 1,320 watts. So once you get this in here, you should have an answer of 10.9 ohms. Let's see some more. Page 621. 621. 621 in your textbook. 621. By the way, since my amazing singing kind of reminded me of this, has anybody seen the lineup for the state fair? Oh, yeah, my goodness. I'm not even talking about that. I am talking about I love the 90s. Vanilla Ice, Bone Thugs and Harmony. Um, and there's like three or four other ones. I'm just like, what? It's going to be amazing. Uh, amazing. Let's look at number two on page 621. Okay. 
It says a small electronic device is rated at 0 0.25 watts when connected to 120 volts. What is the resistance of the device? Again, figure out what you know. Okay. You know that power is equal to 0 0.25 watts. You know, delta V is equal to 120 volts. And we are solving for resistance. So we're going to go ahead and use the same formula as our last equation. Now I want you to spend a few moments and solve this problem. And then after about 20 seconds or so, 25 seconds, we will see where you're at. Six twenty one in your invisible book, Ty. <laughs> and now I can't read my writing. That's unfortunate. I think it's I cannot make that sign, that symbol. What do we have for an answer? Who wants to give us a who wants to give us the answer? Fifty-seven thousand six hundred. Yeah. Just like that, I, I rounded. I rounded. Okay, let's try something else. Let's try. Um. Let's try number three. Oh, I need some more space up here. Let's try number three. A calculator is rated at 0 0.10 watts and has an internal resistance of 22 ohms. What battery potential difference is required for this device? So my question to you is, looking at number three, what version or what formula are we going to use? What do we know? We know power. That's a W. We know resistance the top hat now that's terrible and so now we're trying to find a potential difference so we're going to again use the same formula this time we're solving for v but don't forget you got that square to deal with here so delta v is equal to the square root of p times r so, again, go ahead and solve this. What do we get? Good enough. 1.5 volts, 1.48 volts. Very good. Now, I've got one more I want to do. It's kind of a multi-stepper. Number four. Number four. And this one I'm just going to read, and then you have to figure out how to solve it. And then we'll compare notes. Uh, an electric heater is operated by applying a potential difference of 50.0 volts across a wire of total resistance 8.00 ohm. Find the current in the wire and the power rating of the heater. So think about what you know or what you're told. Think about what you have to solve for and solve it. It's again, it's a two part question. And once everyone has answered both parts, then we will discuss. Those of you at home, you actually get to see me solve this. Lucky day.
Give me about another 15 to 20 seconds. All right, what do we know? What's the information we have? We know our potential difference of 50 volts. We know our resistance was eight ohm. We had to calculate current in and power rating of that heater. Mel, I'm gonna call you Mel because I'm recording. What'd you get for current? For current, I got 6.25 amps. 6.25 amps, very good. Power, champion. 312 and a half watts. Very good. So, let's see a variety of questions using a variety of formulas. Okay, again, <clears throat> you're going to be using four or five variables that you're needing to uh, keep an eye out for and then make a judgment call on what formula you're going to use. Yes. Hmm. Did you have found the power first? Yeah, you could have. Because I mean, yeah, you're not. You, you didn't have to rely on that first one. <clears throat> so, um, I mean, you could have even you could have solved power after you solved the current, the P times I or P equals I times delta V. So you you could have solved it that way as well. Okay. All right. So, posted the classroom is problem bank E, okay? <clears throat> the problems that you are going to do. Now, I have them written down there on the back of the board, too, and I think I even have them written in the description of the assignment. You're to do problems one and two and four through ten. So you can cross out number three. <laughs> so cross out number three, do the rest. You have the rest of the time to work on this. Make sure you get submitted by tomorrow evening. All that fun stuff. Those of you who are at home, thank you for joining. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to get a hold of me. But you may sign off at this moment.